Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number one of Settle the Score. Well, the intro. Settle the Score is where I take TV shows, movies, video games, anything that has music in them, and replace the music with my own. Not only do I replace the music, but I actually give you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how I got to the finished product. My goal in the hopefully not so distant future is to actually score movies and TV shows as a profession. So I figured why not document the journey? As you can tell by the thumbnail today, I will be rescoring an absolute classic, The Matrix. This is one of my all time favorite movies and I was super excited to dive into the futuristic techno type genre because I've never really done anything like that. Uh, and I was super excited to try it out. So before showing any final products, I'll actually be going layer by layer and kind of explaining what I added and why I added it. And at the end, we'll see everything put together. And if you're curious on how my scoring is actually compared to the originals, I will be putting the original at the end of the video and you can let me know how I did. Without further ado, let's get into it. With this movie being all about technology and hacking and the future and everything, uh, before I got into any melodies or chords, I wanted to get uh, more computer-esque sound effects. So uh, that I actually found in this thing called Trailer FX1. Uh, it has a bunch of great buzzing and hissing and rumbling and everything like that, uh, that I ended up doing sporadically and then actually turned that into the beat itself. So there's other percussive aspects once things get started. Uh, but initially it is all through this uh, ambient sounds that kind of form together and uh, come together to make this beat. Once the ambient sounds ended up making a consistent beat, I was able to build on top of it. So that's when I added this East Bay drum kit over top. Uh, it's very light, it's very, you know, tits and tats, nothing really too heavy. Uh, it's on top just to kind of keep the momentum going and have everything on something to rest on. For the next track, I backtracked a little bit and I added this bright synth brass. So this is something that added a really good punch, but still wasn't too heavy. Uh, I didn't want to put too many things in to, to uh, weigh down what was going on in the scene. So it was a nice setup that could lead into other things. So all five of these layers actually are from different sound patches that were essentially doing the same job as the Trailer FX1 patch, uh, but was giving me a lot more variety. So I used as much as I could from the FX1, had great samples, uh, but I did feel like it was missing some. So these five are just to fill in those gaps and give it a more full sound. Once we get about 30 seconds into it, you'll finally hear the first chords of the piece themselves. So uh, this also uses the bright synth brass and eventually goes over to what's called the final lead. Uh, these both have similar sounds, but I think they had different types of punches to them that I tried to intertwine and, and kind of duet together as opposed to just using one synth throughout the whole thing. After the final lead chord progression, there was actually a visual pause that I wanted to replicate musically. So I had everything cut out for a second. I let the scene kind of speak for itself and then come back in with a very fast paced bass line. Once this bass line finally has some room to establish itself, I wanted to add a lot more beefy drums. Uh, so instead of having the soft tits and tats that I had before, I wanted to give it much harder of a hit. So when it came back in, it made a much more of an impact. After the drums came in, I wanted to repurpose that final lead because I really liked the sound of it. And I added a fairly high pitched droning note to go over top of it to kind of counteract the busyness of the bass line. Once the final lead is done playing, there's a great visual moment where he kind of collects himself behind a pillar before reinitiating in the fight. Uh, so I wanted to emphasize that with a very short drum break and then come back in as hard as possible when he decides to come back in. When I had the bass line re-enter this time, I actually coupled it with the bright synth brass that I used before. So it's the same exact melody, just on two different levels. Uh, and that way it makes it a little bit more full and it's not exactly the same as the time before when you heard it. Once the bass and the synth both played twice through, I figured it was getting pretty repetitive, uh, but I didn't want to change it too much. So all I did was I took the brass and I upped it one octave. So that way it sounded very similar, just in a slightly different register. Once that played through, I decided to dial back the drums just a little bit and showcase more of the droning notes that were going over the bass line when it initially came in. Uh, so that ended up making this really cool sound that I really enjoyed and I wanted to showcase that a little bit more. Uh, and that also gave the track a little bit more room to breathe. So instead of being in your face 100% all the time, uh, it let the track kind of sit back for a second, collect itself, and then when it came back in, it was much more impactful. For the last 15 or 20 seconds, I decided to bring back in the Liverpool bass and the bright brass synth, along with the drums to give it some sort of uh, closing statement before moving on to the next scene. 
With that being said, let's see how it sounds. Please remove any metallic items you're carrying, keys, loose change.
If you've made it this far, thank you for watching, and I will be right here next Wednesday for episode number two. And if you want to make sure you don't miss anything happening on the channel, you can always subscribe. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed episode one, and I will see you next week.